Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we have another fun 90 day update video. I have enjoyed putting these together, not only to share with you guys, but to just kind of show me which boxes of these crazy mystery boxes that I order seem to be worth my time. Now again, it is a mystery box for all of these update videos and you know, it doesn't mean just cause today's is great that the next one will be. So today I have got a fun one. If you hear my husband, and the dog, he is always doing some sort of Pinterest project. Today, he's taking apart a turtle enclosure and creating a new spot for our plants out front. Anyway, um, that's what all the ruckus is. You also notice you have a different view behind me today. We have a great wall of windows out to our lake, so the lighting is just always crazy because I have windows everywhere. But this is a time of day when my kids are at school and I can actually sit down and it's semi-quiet. All right, so we are going to throw it back to a video that I did on April the 14th. I'm like a month behind on this video, but it probably took me that long to get these items listed from the time that I uploaded the video. This was the thread up name brand handbag box and I had two, so I unboxed two of them. They come with five items, four being bags, one accessory. Both of my accessories were, no, one was a wallet, one was a crossbody like nylon cheaper bag you can get i've seen people get watches sunglasses that sort of thing so 10 items total it was 106 dollars and 50 cents including taxes i don't pay shipping no one would pay shipping on those boxes i believe they are a hundred dollars even when you add in your tax uh, so that made each item 21 dollars and 50 cents which is quite a hefty cost of goods if you remember that video which i will link below these bags were a labor of love and I vowed to never buy these boxes again, which spoiler, I did buy one more and it's been sitting in my office for two months and I've not even looked in it. So it was a lot of work, but as you'll see, was it worth it? I'll show you and, and you can make that decision. But out of the 10 items, I have sold five. And I will start out by saying the five that I haven't sold have a ton of interest they recently, I, I use the relist delist function every single morning using Posture VA, best thing ever. And if you don't have it yet, look y'all, use my code. I know I always talk about it, but it literally has been the best thing. I am still making Poshmark sales daily. Anyway, I just relisted those because it had been 60 days and they have just as much interest as they did before. So I do have them priced high. So I do have a feeling that eventually all five of these will sell, you know, in 90 days, that's like the ideal sell through rate for any item. So I'm the more expensive items, I'm fine with them taking a little longer. Okay, long intro, but we're gonna go through the five. I'm gonna pop up the sold listing right here so that you can see which bag I'm talking about. I do have my notebook where I'm old school. I hand wrote the items and then I have my computer screen just so I can mention them. So the first item, these are in no particular order of which they sold. It's just in which I wrote them down on this list. So this was a Michael Kors pebbled leather bag. And to be honest, I almost did not even list this bag because my listing sh says note with like a bunch of asterisks. The title even said Michael Kors pebble leather bag read. It said listing this as is play condition. I literally typed out this bag is in rough shape. It still sold very quickly for $20. Uh, after shipping discount fees, all that, it gave me $14.28, which no, didn't cover the $21.50, but look, I was super happy to move a bag that um, I even said you could invest in this bag. It needs a new handle. The leather was buttery soft and it was very a very good quality bag. It just needed some total rehab. So was the bag probably over $100 new? Yeah, so someone got a good deal. They knew what they were getting, got five stars, good to go. All right, the next bag, this was so cute. It was a vintage Dooney and Burke satchel. I don't know from what year, but I did figure out that it was vintage. This was like the only bag that I did not have to do any work on cleaning. I think I did spruce up the handles with my Wonder Balsam, but this one, it sold very quickly. I did accept an offer and I, I think I only had it listed maybe at 65. I just remember thinking it was a decent offer. And um, so here you'll see the bag. And I also want to pop up the review because 
don't you guys just love when you get a nice five star comment review? Like it made me happy. Um, she, uh, I don't have up here what she said, but you will see it. Uh, it definitely made me smile and she promised to give it a good home and those kind of things are what make me really love reselling and giving life to items that might otherwise have found their way to a dumpster somewhere and she's going to love this bag and these this bag will last forever it was it's Dooney and Burke the vintage super well made leather and did I say it sold for $53 and gave me $40.68 now I do want to say on these 10 bags, I would be lying if I told you I, I spent less than eight hours between cleaning them, letting them dry, cleaning them again, photographing them. It's a labor of love to list handbags. And those of you that do it often, props, more power to you. But this bag doesn't come up often. So would I order it again? Probably, maybe, I don't know. But it's a lot of work unless you're finding handbags at your thrift stores that are ready to go. This to me bag, this was definitely the winner out of the two boxes. It got so much attention super quickly. And honestly, I took an offer. If I had held out, you know, I think I had it listed at like 225. I got a $176 offer and I was like, you know what? That gives me $139.08 of money to take home, which then honestly covered uh, a box and a half essentially. So I took the offer and I was happy with it. They were happy with it. Um, so if you ever see Toomey backpacks, they they definitely sell and they sell quickly. All right, this Kate Spade. I really thought this bag might have been fake at first, and I this is the other thing. It, it forces you to do a lot of research if you're not familiar. I mean, I'm familiar with these brands, but not handbags and just the way this tag looked. But then it did have a serial number, like on on the buckle or the magnetic clasp. So I did a lot of research. Come to find out this is from the 90s. They made it in red as well. It was in great shape and it actually, I did not expect to sell this bag for $65. I was kind of shooting for the moon when it came to pricing this item and it sold. And th these bags that have sold definitely sold very quickly. I think all of them sold within the first 30 days. Sold for $65 and gave me 52. And this last bag, this last bag is what frustrates me about reselling. You know, you have those awesome buyers that give you five star reviews. And then you have people like the person who bought this. I got this order. I work from home. Okay. I run this business. I do a couple other things from home. If you place an order with me before noon, my mailman is pretty on the dot comes at noon. Your order is going out as long as it wasn't a, I, I never ship out. If it's a full price sale, I do wait the three hours. But buddy, if you send me an offer or accept an offer, that order is being packaged. I mean, I just walk into my inventory closet, package it up, put it in the mailbox. This person sent me an offer. And I, I like how buyers often think that we're not also or buyers. Like we know how the platform works. I know that you cannot accidentally make a purchase on Poshmark. Your child cannot accidentally make a purchase. It is more than a one click button, right? Like you guys, I'm preaching to the choir here. Thank you for letting me rant. But this person, she sent me an offer, which you have to click the offer. You have to, it goes to the payment screen where you have to select whether you want it to come from your balance or PayPal or whatever. There's at least three times you're clicking a button, right? Anyway, offer came through. I accepted, I printed the label, put it in the mailbox. This particular day, I jumped in my car and I left. So like I went thrifting, I don't remember where I was, but this was in the mailbox. I was gone from home there, you know, my husband was probably with me. Anyway, this was the accessory that came in another box. It was faded. I listed this in play condition for general wear and fading. Please review all the photos. It was a solid nylon bag, but because I had to do so much scrubbing, I probably faded. I mean, the inside was clean. She commented on my listing after I had already tossed this bag out, you know, in the mailbox, clicked, mark is shipped. Please cancel my offer. I didn't mean to buy this item. I accidentally clicked the offer button. First of all, no, you didn't. Second of all, girlfriend, your, your bag's on the way. I sent her a message. I didn't comment on, I sent her a message and I said, I'm so sorry. You know, this is a business of mine. Like 
the moment you accepted my offer, I, I put, she almost was like, you're lying, you know, which, what's the point of that? Anyway, when she got her item, she left me a one-star review and, and, and didn't, her, re, you know, you can click the reasons. Like she didn't type anything. She said, seller responsiveness. And I know on Poshmark, it doesn't matter. No one's ever going to see those reviews. And in fact, I, I still have a five-star overall rating, but like seller responsiveness, like you had your item in your hands within 48 hours of the moment you accidentally clicked purchase. Anyway, what probably happened is she bought it and, and was like, oh, Kate Spade, pink purse for 40 bucks. That is a great deal. Bought it and then decided to go read the description and realized it's because this is the reason why it was. Anyway, it really it bothers me. So of course I just blocked her and moved on. Pretty sure I sent her a message first and said, you're welcome to reposh this item and you can even use my photos, but in the future you shouldn't leave people bad reviews for an error on your end or something like that. And maybe I shouldn't be snarky and I should just let it go. But sometimes I cannot be like Elsa and I can't let it go. Like <sighs> rant over. Sold for $40 and it gave me 32. So all of that to say, these five items sold for a grand gross total of $354. That gave me $278.04. Now, the entire box cost me $213 even. So at this moment, I have only sold five of the 10. So I still have five more items. They are all listed. They are all worthy of being sold. Like there's nothing wrong with them. I didn't have to trash any of them like sometimes. And I'm already in the profit $65.04. Now, one would argue that that was a lot of work to make $65. This is true. So I am still banking on the fact that I'm going to sell these other five and it's just gonna be pure profit. Now, if I want to break out my eight hours into, you know, divide 65 by eight, at least I made minimum wage, right? To scrub purses for eight hours could be worse. So will I buy this box again? This box, like I said, does not come available very often. In fact, like I, I, I check the thread up rescue website every single day and I've not seen it in weeks. Now they do still have it there. It's not like completely gone. It's just grayed out because it's not available. I would buy it again and I've got one in my office so you will soon. I am trying, if you haven't noticed my loyal subscribers, I'm trying to do two videos a week and put them out on Mondays and Thursdays. And um, so I've got about six videos toot toot, that's me tooting my horn, in the queue, already recorded, already sitting in YouTube universe, scheduled to go for the next like four, three, four weeks, whatever it is. I can do math, right? If I have six videos, that's three weeks. So you will see that one, but it's going to be a little bit. And um, yeah, so if I see this box again, I would buy it. This is one that I would recommend if and only if you're willing to put in work. And as always with mystery boxes, I am not affiliated with ThreadUp. I don't get any kind of kickbacks. I do have a code where you can get $10, but you can't even use it on a mystery box. But um, if you don't, if you're not willing, if you don't have $100 to 100% lose, never see a dime back from, I don't suggest buying this box. Same, I will say that for every mystery box. If you're not willing to literally throw that, that money that it costs in the trash, don't do mystery boxes. I would suggest sourcing it thrift stores and the bins and your own closets and such. So please give this video a thumbs up on your way out. It really does help my channel. And I do try really hard to reply to every single comment you guys make. Some of you, I feel like I of course would, could never pick you out in a crowd because I don't know what you look like, which is kind of the odd thing about YouTube. But some of you guys comment on every single one of my videos and I do really appreciate it. Reselling is kind of one of those very lonely businesses. I'm, I mean, I'm sitting here talking to you, my camera, myself, nobody. Um, so it's nice to feel like I have these these friends out here in, in the YouTube universe. And um, yeah, so you guys make me happy. I feel like I, I have some sort of adult interaction <laughs> that happens, even though, as you can see, there's no one here but me and the dog. My husband is outside. But anywho, thank you guys for letting me share this update with you. I know I've gotten positive feedback that most of you guys like that I go back and share these. And if you don't, well, if you made it this far, thank you anyway for watching. And I will see you in the next. And spoiler, it will probably be a thread up fun box battle with my husband is what will probably be out next for you. So till next time. Bye guys.